The title of this work is The White Bear Effect, and that refers back to uh, Dostoevsky, who identified a paradox, which is that the more we try and suppress a thought, the more it returns to haunt us that the idea of a very positive mental focus can be extremely useful in instrumental terms in getting things done and pushing ourselves to achieve. But there is a cost to that, there's an after effect. Uh, and that is a sense of doubt, uh, a questioning maybe, uh, a regret or uh, a sense of wonder maybe at what's been missed out and, and lost in the focus. So the idea of a positive and a negative effect in things I think is extremely broad and wide ranging. But within terms of the image, the idea that neuroscientists have explored in sports science particularly is that if an athlete can produce in their mind uh, a video clip, if you will, of the perfect action which they're attempting to perform, they'll be able to perform that better. Well, one, one of the strategies that I think we've deployed on a number of occasions in our projects is what we call displacement. We take something which is already existing in the world, like the LED screen, we don't have it kind of custom built. It, it, it's something that can be bought or hired. And when, but by placing it in a different way or at a different scale or, in a, or the viewer in a different relation to it, it changes, it makes it strange. And that's one of the things that really fascinates us, the way you can take something which may be very everyday, but by placing it in a different context, at a different moment, you, are, you understand it differently. Beginning with the installation at the De La War Pavilion in Bexhill, at that point we were engaging with the phenomenon of the Olympics as a public media spectacle. And in the run up to the Olympics, the great frenzy and the, the excitement, uh, the focus of attention was very much part of the temporal context for that work. It was uh, current in the news media and forefront in people's minds. A year after, that's not the case at all. It's curious because a lot of the work we've done previously has been site specific. There have been projects which have been conceived and made in a particular place for that place at a particular time and relating directly to that context. And this is one of the very few projects which actually, to some extent, has moved. It's been in two very different venues, the Delaware Pavilion and now the White Building. What is that change is primarily, um, in terms of location, is that we're now right next to the perimeter fence of the Olympic Park. Victor Bergin, the writer and theorist who was a great inspiration to me as a student, observed that the framing device of the, uh, the camera viewfinder is in fact a very important way of articulating social power. Here though we've not got a window on the world, we've got something which is more effectively a barrier, although you can still see through it to the entranceway, just across the canal where the, the entry point is to the perimeter fence. We rotated the individual panels which make up this um, component system so that the slats, the bars are now vertical. And there's a striking resemblance between this uh, physical installation and the perimeter fence itself, uh, which is a semi-military uh, zone of inclusion and exclusion uh, right along the, the boundary line of the Olympic Park. And we were always quite ambitious that this should be a kind of stadium-sized screen. And uh, when we were presented with the opportunity to show it not only in a larger space, but also in a space so close to the Olympic site, it, it seemed like a golden opportunity. It's 40% larger than the previous version. And also, uh, I think the way that the uh, LED screens uh, resemble bars is quite powerful, a kind of over, slightly overwhelming presence, which is really actually what we were always hoping for, that this would be a kind of overwhelming, you're too close, this is not the way you're meant to perceive these kind of screens. The idea of this is that these are actually very common things, you see them around a lot, but you place the viewer very directly next to one and suddenly it looks like something very strange indeed. We did give a lot of focus to the physical aspects of the installation here, the technology, uh, the spatial dimensions of the exhibition area uh, and the kind of embodied uh, presence of the viewer in the gallery. But I think there's another aspect which is the psychological affect of the image. Uh, when it's expanded and presented in this particular way, echoing or perhaps overplaying the, uh, the use of spectacle in public spaces. And I think that the ideal of perfect achievement is almost inevitably going to bring a sense of disappointment, that we fall short somehow from these images of perfection. And that disappointment, I think, is one of the key drivers of dissatisfaction and desire in consumer culture. If there is a side effect then, does one become more doubtful of one's actions in the world? Is there a, a sense of loss or doubt for athletes after the great moment that they've had? 
And I think that uh, these are questions which perhaps don't get covered in the positivity of the, uh, the mainstream commercial media. And it's our job as artists, in a way, to recognize that for every action, there's a reaction, and to acknowledge that uh, effort comes at a cost and that positivity carries with it a relationship to the negative thought that uh, we might prefer to disregard.